I don't like doing these. Hello, it's me. I'm back again. I no longer look like I have baby diarrhea on my head. Yay! You may have noticed that I've not uploaded a video since, yes, September. I've actually not recorded a video with myself in it since like June last year. So I've been shitting myself having to break the ice again, you know, looking at the viewfinder because... I'm not going to do an update on what's going on in my life and everything now because in a couple of weeks time I'm going to vlog the whole week because I like doing that as much as I hate editing it because I always film so much I'm going to vlog the whole week I've got lots to talk about there's lots of stuff that is going on there's bad and good but I'm going to leave that all for then. Otherwise this would be a video of me just chatting shit to you and ranting about all the different fucktards that I have encountered in the last few months and yeah. What this video is, it's going to be things that I have learned in 2015. So you'll kind of get to know a little bit about what's going on but I want to update you on what's going on with my feet and walking and my mental health, physical health, my life, but all of that. That will happen in the vlog. This is just a funny and updatey video. But I'll get started now. Number one, purple hair doesn't suit me. You'll notice that I now have black hair, whereas I last had yellow hair. I'm loath to call it blonde hair because it was not blonde, it was yellow. You know, the kind of yellow baby diarrhea mustardy colour. It was not good. Why did nobody just say, Charlotte, your hair looks shit? I wouldn't have minded because inside I felt the same. It was disgusting. I decided to dye the tips just like a wash in, wash out thingy. And it kind of got further and further up because I was like, this is cool, I like this. Until I stupidly decided to do the whole thing. I was like, it's wash in, wash out. That's not a problem. Wash in, wash out on bleach hair doesn't wash in, wash out. It fucking stains the cuticle. It's purple for good. It didn't suit me. Moving on to number two. Green hair suits me even less. To get rid of the purple hair, I thought, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a light brown sort of color because the hair colour that I really liked is when I was going from black to blonde, I had like highlights. You'll see in the first video that I uploaded on this channel, or the f second, third, it was kind of like a mid browny, dark blonde colour. I really liked that and I thought, well, I'll just dye it like a golden brown colour. Big mistake. If you use a dye containing peroxide on purple hair, it turns green. I didn't know that at the time. Obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have done it. Green really, really, really doesn't suit me. And I thought, well, if I dye it again, then maybe it'll come out. I didn't realise at the time that it was the peroxide doing this, so I did it again and it just turned even greener. And then when I obviously did some research and realised it was the peroxide and tried to work out what to do, I started trying to strip it out without using peroxide and trying to get rid of the purple. So in the end, I had to dye it darker and the first dye, there was still a green tint, so I had to dye it at one darker. And there was still an underlying green tint, so in the end I was just like, fuck it, I'll go black. So that's what I did. The funny thing is, I keep missing a spot, so I've got like this green streak. And no matter how many times I've, done, I've still got this damn green streak, but I'm just gonna have to rock it because apparently I'm just shit at dyeing my hair. Number three, I'm fairly certain I have a morbid phobia of Christmas. The whole of December, it just gives me the shakes and makes me cry. I mean, I made a video last year talking about Christmas with mental illness and I talked about how I felt about dealing with um, Christmas. People make you feel like you're a Grinch type figure if you're not shitting happiness and glitter come the 1st of December. But for me, it's kind of a reminder of everything I don't have and being around people that do have those things is just excruciatingly painful. That's kind of why I struggle with Christmas. You know, on top of the fact that I just don't do presents. Well, I love giving other people presents. I can't accept any type of presents at all. 
birthday, Christmas, random presents. I don't deal well with it. Number four, well, no matter how much you think you've beaten an addiction, it can still bite you in the ass. Literally. See, now you're watching this and you're watching the edited down version, but I've just talked so much shit and we're not even halfway through that my camera's just overheated. Go me. Number five, laxatives are far too freely available. Amazon, Boots, Superdrug, eBay. So this is kind of obviously following on from what I've just said about addiction. I have previously been addicted to laxatives. I've not really talked about it before. If it's something that people are interested in me talking about, I will. In fact, I think I did talk about it in my video in which I talk about how to deal with the refeeding process, which I will link down below. Since September, I've probably used them at least every other day if not every day and I don't mean one or two tablets considering the fact that all I've been eating is a little bit of vegetables or egg whites every couple of days my body's a little bit fucked I'll probably talk about that more in the vlog but I don't want to trigger anybody I will only talk about it in a way that is about how I'm dealing with coming off of them and when I start eating again properly to try and prevent more damage um, which will be in a couple of weeks I need to give my stomach a chance to heal first and give my mind a chance to deal with coming off of laxatives and then dealing with having food in my body without immediately getting rid of it. Number six Following on from what I just said about my camera overheating, I've realised that I have a problem with using words. I talk far too much, and not just in a way that I talk too much, but I've realised this with my blog and it started when I was making YouTube videos like last year and stuff. By the way, if you haven't read my blog, I've been posting on there at least once a week, both mental health based things and non-mental health based things. Go and check out my blog, I'm really 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 proud of it and I will talk about that in a little bit. What was I saying? I talk too much. I have words in my brain and it's like I have to say them. And with writing, it's like I have to write what I'm thinking. I can't edit it down, or I do edit it down, but like when I'm editing, I'm like, but that belongs there, that's what I was thinking at the time that when I wrote it. I can't take it out because that's a piece of the blog. That's what I was thinking. Like. When I'm writing a text, I have to say the whole thing. You know, some people can get away with writing a sentence. I will write like three paragraphs. I really try and not talk so much, but it doesn't work. Is anyone else like that? Or is it just me? If I can ever make a video that's under 10 minutes long, it will be a fucking miracle, I tell you. I also swear too much, but I'm not so bothered about that. Number seven. Medical professionals are really not to be trusted. And for once, I'm not talking about my GP. He's still not to be trusted, but I'm leaving that surgery, so that's fine. He's still a complete fucktard, but that's fine, we're over that. He's still been continuing his fucktard ways. But the one person who I thought I could rely on, the one person, my neurologist, completely stabbed me in the back. I mean, he's been refusing to treat me for like almost a year, but he did something which if you've been following my blog, then you will know about. It just shocked me and really pissed me off. And let's just say he is on my list now. My list, by the way, is a list of people whose cars I'm gonna shit on or send a shit in a box to. Just FYI, so you never wanna be on my list. Number eight. This is related to the previous one. And it's because of him that this is kind of an issue. Again, if you follow my blog, then you'll know about this. I have been trying to get a car. Yeah, Charlotte, how can you get a car? How are you gonna drive with your feet? Basically, to cut a long story short, I will talk about it more in the vlog. Um, I know I keep saying that, but I don't wanna talk too much shit in this. You can get adapted cars for people with disabilities. Even though I don't like thinking of myself as having a disability. You have to get a grant. The first thing that I needed to do was declare myself to the DVLA as having peripheral neuropathy. With that condition, 
the DVLA have to know about that, which would mean it would be on my license, they permanently know about it, which is fine. I'm never gonna drive normally again, so they, they have to know about it, that's fine. I've sent my license off, sent the form off. The one thing they had to do was contact my doctor about it. I've never, I've not seen him in ages. He doesn't know about any of this car stuff. I was in the middle of applying for the grant. I didn't know if I would get it. It was a long shot. I was, you know, really, really hopeful. The license thing wasn't on my mind at all. I've not seen my neurologist in a very long time. I've not spoken to him about my treatment. I've never spoken to him about driving because it was never an issue. It was never an option. When I used to see him, he, he, was, he would go on about, you know, he wanted me to have a life. He wanted me to have freedom and all of this crap. It clearly was crap because he didn't give a fuck about that. No, because he told the DVLA that I was unfit to drive. I got a letter from the DVLA saying they were taking my license away from me. And then the next day, I got a letter saying that they were giving me a full grant to get an adapted car. That is just the definition of ironic. So I have got a full grant to get an adapted car with like a thing to take the wheelchair out in the boot. It's fully adapted so I can drive with my hands. And it's just, the car that I've chosen is just amazing. But the DVLA have taken my license away from me. And it's not because of my feet, no. It's because of my brain. He's told them that my brain isn't good enough to drive. The fucking wanker. So I've appealed and I'm literally expecting a letter any day now to tell me whether or not the appeal is successful. If the appeal isn't successful, I can take it to court, but by then the grant for the car will have run out because you only you get a three month period. <sighs> Dr. DeLuca, I am very ashamed of you. So that has been causing me a great deal of stress. However, here is a more happy one. I can't remember what I'm up to. I think I'm up to number eight. That's not eight, that's nine. Eight. That's seven. Eight. Not everyone is a wanker. Chances are, if you're a government body, you're a wanker and you're on my list. But not everyone is a wanker. There are some nice people in the world. Number nine. I can't do, oh, that's what you're supposed to do, nine. HTML does not stand for Hotmail. Yeah, that's something I've learned with my blog. Now I can talk about my blog. I set up my blog to coincide with kind of taking a break from YouTube videos. And I've tried setting up blogs before. It's never really worked because I'm never really understood all of that shit. But I worked really, really, really hard on it. I designed it myself and I fucked around with the coding. At first, I genuinely thought that HTML stood for Hotmail. You know, it looks like Hotmail because that's, that's how it reads. But it doesn't stand for that. I don't know what it does stand for, but it doesn't stand for Hotmail. And I can kind of understand it if I don't tell my computer to go and fuck itself if it doesn't work. This is also a very blatant plug for my blog. Go and check it out. There is lots and lots of posts to read, go and subscribe. I normally upload every Wednesday, sometimes I post sporadically. I will be continuing to post alongside YouTube videos. I'm gonna try and post every week on this channel. It might take me a bit of a while to get into it and I am contemplating posting some music if that's something that you would be interested in. I don't know. The blog, I'm going to try and run it alongside this channel so that it doesn't overlap, because obviously it's hard thinking of ideas for both videos and blog posts without just writing what I'm doing videos about. But I've been working really hard on my blog, so I would really appreciate it if you would go over and subscribe. Look through the old posts, there's stuff that you might find helpful. Or you can just read the random shit that I've been posting there. Or just don't if you don't want to. I won't know. And share it around because I would appreciate that. It would make me really happy. And then the last thing I learned in 2015 is I need a puppy. Not want, need. Somewhere out there is a little doe-eyed, ginger-haired, long-eared puppy who needs to be loved and I have realised that 
I am the one to give that look. My stomach is making crazy ass noises. That cute little puppy would fit right into my heart and she needs a mummy and um, it would be selfish of me to deny her that love. That is it for this video. I have talked so much shit and it's going to take me so long to edit, but thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe. If you have any questions for me, then leave them below. And if there's enough, then I might do a Q&A video or I will answer them when I'm vlogging. If there's any videos you would like me to make, if you have any ideas for blog posts or videos, let me know. But thank you for watching. I really appreciate your support. Remember to go and check out my blog. I'm not going to say that again on this video. That's it for now. Like, subscribe and share the video and the blog posts. Bye. Why do I have to talk so much shit? Nah.